What's up everybody, Jared with Orion Training Group and today we're gonna to talk to you about the differences between a dynamic entry and a deliberate entry. And you're gonna hear this a lot on the internet. People will say, oh, dynamic this or deliberate that. We believe that it should be somewhat of a spectrum. Um, how you ramp up your speed should be based on your mission and the environment and your manpower. You'll see us say that a lot on the page. Manpower, mission, environment is huge. Those are massive driving factors that make you pick how to solve a problem in the moment or how to define your SOP for your team so you know how to solve that problem together. Whether you have one solution that you always go for or one doctrine that you always subscribe to. Now for our flexible search program, that's what we call our CQB curriculum, um, we're really big on showing students multiple ways of doing it. So you're gonna hear me talk about dynamic, you're gonna hear me talk about deliberate movements. There is not one that is a favorite or one that is uh, harped on more than the other. We believe that those should be equally applied and correctly applied um, where they're actually necessary. Again, based on your manpower, your mission, and your environment, just to give you some context there too, um, if you're in a trailer and the hallway is 28 inches wide, can you really pan or do a, a wrap of a door or a pie or a door in a team environment? Do you want to be stuck in that hallway a long time trying to work around a threshold that's made of basically you know wafer paper? Um, trying to gain those exterior angles, is it is that environment good for a deliberate movement or is it better to try to take that doorway quickly with two to three people, depending on your SOP, and get out of that hallway? Different people are gonna have different answers for that, which is why it's good to understand the why behind both. So we're gonna be cutting these videos in and out. You'll be able to see what I'm talking about as I'm talking about it. Okay, so for this first video, we are gonna be talking about a three-man element clearing one room with no other factors. So there's no long threat down the hall. We're not worried about rear security. We're just looking at addressing this one room deliberately. Uh, for those of you who've never heard of it, I like the concept of Occam's razor. What that means is we don't worry about all the other minutia. We focus on the issue at hand. We're talking about dynamic versus deliberate. We'll start with the slow one and look at the benefits and some, maybe some of the cons. So in the video, the first gentleman conducts what's called a pan across the door. Panning is moving smoothly at the speed that you can process information, and that is critical. If you run across the door as fast as you can get over there, you probably cut away the advantage of actually gaining those exterior angles because you need to be able to process if there's a shoot uh, target or a no shoot target, you know, whether you need to address that with rounds or give that person verbal commands, right? Um, once you've gotten to that far side of the door or depending on your environmental factors, wherever your pan terminates, you're at a departure point or a point of committal. Um, now we have what's called a crisscross. You have the other gentleman looking into a deep corner, the guy who's done the pan looking into a deep corner. How do we know who goes first? Again, we can do a whole other video on nonverbal cues, but the person who either has the most danger or has seen the most of the room goes first. And in this case, it's the guy who sees the most of the room because on a center-fed room, the doors in the center, the FBI would call that a clue, there's equal dead space on either side. So again, he pans all the way across, other gentleman opens up that gate for him, they enter the room, they hit those corners, they collapse their sectors, and that third guy comes in and just fills in the rest. Um, now, that took maybe, what, three and a half seconds? It looked very smooth. Was there anything really slow about it? Probably not. Um, how does that look opposed? There's a lot of things that can go into that. Um, what is the What are the walls made of? Is it drywall and pine? Um, are we looking at some sort of commercial material? Um, is it gonna be cinder block that's filled? You know, there's all these different things to consider, but ultimately bullets go through air the same way they go through drywall. And uh, if you shoot the right spot enough, they'll often go through a lot of what we would consider cover, like hollow block and whatever else. So CQB is the most dangerous thing you can do. Just because we went slow and took up a little bit more of the angles doesn't mean we're now bulletproof, right? Notice how they got through the door rather quickly. The movement into the room was not slow at all. So you'll hear some people call it slow and deliberate or deliberate. Um, the way we like to describe it is just deliberate clearance. You're taking your time, you're moving at the speed you can process. And here's what I really want you guys to focus on. Look at that rep again. We'll play it again on a loop. Look at the center of the room. It gets seen before entry. Okay, that's critical, because when we talk about dynamic, you'll see that that doesn't happen, okay? 
So the center of the room gets seen. Both of the corners, as much as you can get, get seen. There's probably, if I remember correctly, the walls are 10 feet. There's probably a foot and a half, two foot gap at the far end. So you could hide somebody in that corner. So basically 80% of the room's cleared. And then they commit to that entry and when they actually get into the room, it's quick. So now let's talk about dynamic. On this dynamic entry, you'll notice the stack is set up the same way. Again, Occam's razor, we're keeping everything relatively the same. But when they actually make entry, what are they introducing into the room? They're gaining an advantage with a flashbang or a, a DD, a distraction device. Why is that? Some people will say, well, couldn't you bang on the other one? Absolutely. But the idea is when you take time on the exterior of the doorway to work those exterior angles and see the center of the room, in theory, you're reducing your risk, right? A lot of people that are practitioners of the slow and deliberate for everything, um, they're going to tell you, well, yeah, it's way less risk because I'm not entering the room blind, i.e. I've seen the center. Well, if you just watch this dynamic rep um, after that flashbang's introduced, what do they hit first? Those hard corners, right? Remember we talked about that on the slow and deliberate rep, those hard corners, and the, deep, the deep corners as we call them, where you have that 20% of dead space left over. Well, they didn't see the other 80% of the room before they entered, and so that deflagrating device or distraction device uh, or NFDD or whatever you want to call it, um, when that goes off, the idea is that it interrupts the OODA loop, um, observe, orient, decide, act, of that person in there that possibly wants to do the entry team harm. So when you have a dynamic entry, you need to have dynamic supporting elements. And I will preach this until the day I die. Dynamic movements are very, very effective, but only in the context of they are supported by dynamic elements like flashbangs, break and rake teams, uh, multiple entry points, explosive breaching, and things like that. Because when you enter that room without looking at the center, you're, you're taking maybe a second and a half for those two corners to get hit and then for the center to be looked at. Um, you don't have that risk when you do it slowly and deliberately, right? So the flashbang is taking up that risk that those deliberate movements took up. So you, in theory, are applying similar amounts of risk mitigation with different methods for different reasons. Now, a lot of people are going to say, oh, you should only do dynamic movements for hostage rescue. And that takes me back to what I said in that intro portion. What if your environment drives you to do something like this? So let's say we're just looking for a person. We're not trying to rescue anybody. Um, we're not doing a dope rescue or anything like that. Why would we go and introduce this flashbang? Well, now we can take that Occam's razor away and say, okay, well, maybe that hallway is 28 inches wide uh, and we need to get in that room really quickly because we don't have the ability to post long cover with someone dumping into this room. We have other videos we'll talk about that later on, but that's an application and a why behind you might need to know how to do this dynamically. Even if you are a slow and deliberate team, you need to be able to ramp up that speed to be able to mitigate risk in a different way because you can't always just take your time and pan or pie the exterior. So that's why we preach it's good to be at both. It's good to be good at both. Uh, Mike Jones moment. So in conclusion, when you do something slowly and deliberately, you could also include a flashbang. But the idea is often teams that are doing that, especially in the United States, they're not using flashbangs. They're moving at the speed that they can process, seeing the center of the room before they commit to entry, hitting those corners, collapsing, and they're done on a dynamic entry because we're not taking the time to process the center of the room or even look at it. We introduce something to distract a potential opponent in there. We hit those corners first, then we clear to the center and back. Uh, ultimately, the goal is accomplished exactly the same. All the areas are hit in the room in roughly the same amount of time. It's simply, do we use a flashbang, do we not? Do we see the inside of the room, the interior center area of the room from the outside or not? Otherwise, the end goal is achieved. So don't forget guys, like and subscribe, whichever method you use. Uh, remember it is good to sometimes go dynamic. Can't always be slow and deliberate. So train on both, check out the Instagram, which is at Orion underscore training underscore group. Uh, check out orionconcepts.shop for the merch and t-shirts. And um, simply because I'm wearing this shirt, check out Soy Leader. Dan's a good friend of mine, he makes great products, soyleader.com. So we appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to share with your friends.